I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand basic concepts about inverse of sine function. Let me sketch one sinusoidal function. Let us say that the sine function is kind of like this. As you can see, if I draw a horizontal line, then it is going to cross at more than two points. That really means that in its entire domain, we cannot have inverse of a sine function. Inverse will not be a function for a sine function because it fails horizontal line test, right? So that's kind of important to understand that the domain here is that x belongs to real numbers. That is the domain. Now, in its domain, it fails horizontal line test. Therefore, inverse will not be a function. Correct? So that is very clear. Now what we can do is, we can actually restrict the domain. Now if we restrict the domain, then we can ensure that inverse is a function, right? So let us say that we restrict the domain, let's say that is our y-axis. And if we restrict the domain from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, in that case, we see that it passes for horizontal line test, right? These two points, one of them is outside this particular domain. So, within the interval or within the restricted interval, we find that the sine function passes horizontal line test. So, we choose pi by 2 from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 as the domain. So in the restricted domain, which is from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, it passes horizontal line test, right? So in this domain, inverse will be a function, will be a so this is kind of very important to understand. Therefore, from now onwards, whenever we'll talk about inverse of a sine function, we'll restrict its domain to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, correct? So now, let me sketch the restricted sine function, right? So uh, let's sketch it here. So we are now sketching the restricted sine function, which is from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, right? As you know, the minimum value is minus 1 and the maximum is plus 1, right? So here, it will look like kind of like this. Kind of like this. So we are now considering only a part of our sinusoidal function which is from let us say this is 1 1 and this is from here this goes maximum to 1 this is minus 1 so this is minus 1 this is plus 1 this is minus 1 this is plus 1 and what we see here is that within the interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 the sine function passes horizontal line test, right? So what you see here is that this is this is the function which you're talking about as sine function. Now here, what is the domain? Domain is x which is within minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. And the range y is within minus 1 to plus 1, correct? Okay? So that is minus 1, this is plus 1. And we are talking about the function 
f of x equals to sin x right so so that is how it is okay now let us sketch the inverse of this particular function the inverse of this function will be so if you consider this point this point is 0 0 so the inverse of 0 0 will be 0 0 right let me make a scale here let's say this is 1 1 minus 1 right so let's say this is minus 1 this is 1 this is 1 this is minus 1 right and we have pi by 2 is slightly more than 1 1 and a half actually correct so that is minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 pi by 2 minus pi by 2 correct now if you see this point here is pi by 2 1 so inverse will be you have to flip it 1 pi by 2 so 1 pi by 2 will be that corresponding point this point here is minus pi by 2 minus 1 so the inverse will be minus 1 minus pi by 2 do you see that so likewise if you change all these points flip it you'll get the inverse and the inverse will look like this if you sketch it right so here as you can see this is sine inverse x and in this particular case the domain will be equal to x is within minus 1 and plus 1 right so in this case x is within minus 1 and plus 1 and y value let's say this is y this is x x and y and y value will be between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 so if you compare you can see that the inverse function the domain and range flips do you see that domain becomes the range and range becomes the domain right so that is as expected but I hope with this you understand how sine x and sine inverse x are related. So this is y equals to sine inverse x. So that is the inverse function. You could have also got this sketch by flipping this line over, let's say, some point here, 1, 1, somewhere, right? So, so if you draw a line y equals to x, and then flip it over, reflect it, you will get this curve. That was another way of doing it using graph. So in this video, what you learn is that basically, we need to restrict the domain of sine function to ensure that its inverse is also a function. Now the restriction which is being done is that the domain of sine function is restricted from minus pi by two to plus pi by 2 well the range is definitely between minus 1 to plus 1 as far as the inverse is concerned it will have now the domain of minus 1 to plus 1 and range of minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 the functions look as shown here so I hope with this you understand that sine inverse x is equal to y and then we can write this function as, let me write down here, sine y equals to x. Now in this case, you know y is between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. And x, the value of this function is between minus 1 to plus 1, right? So that is the inverse function, right? So that is the inverse function. So I hope with this, the concept is clear. We'll take a few examples and move forward. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you. 
and all the best.